We're now going to cover what I refer to as Unit 5 in your taxi and private hire training. This is the licensing regulations in England. Four outcomes. Know the requirements to acquire, hold and retain a license to drive and work within the taxi and private hire industry. So this is about you as a driver and application for that license to drive. Know the rules and regulations pertaining to the license, application and operation of a licensed taxi or private hire vehicle. This is about your vehicle that will be licensed to use as a taxi or a private hire. Know how to work within a regulatory framework for carrying passengers for hire and reward, reward with regulations in England. Know the duties and responsibilities of the license operator. This is for the person operating a private hire dispatch office. Four outcomes. Outcome one, know the requirements to acquire, hold and retain a license to drive and work within the taxi and private hire industry. We're going to talk about general legislation and the types of license you can hold as a driver. Requirements to obtain that license. Once you get the license, stay in and working within the regulations so you don't break the law. Suspensions, revocations and appeals. Should there be any complaints against you, how you would uh, appeal against any suspension or revocation of your license. A little bit of history. The sedan chair was the first form of paid public transport in the UK. Obviously in the London area, taking um, merchants, etc., to their townhouses. Um, In 1823, uh, the French brought over a two-wheeled, one-horse carriage known as the Hackney, which is the way, where the word Hackney comes from. Uh, it was a soft top uh, known as a cabriolet, which is a word we still use today, and where the uh, uh, abbreviation cab comes from. 1837, Joseph Hansen from Leicester uh, adapted that particular vehicle uh, so that the driver stood at the rear and there was space for luggage on the roof with a hard roof. Um, obviously, this could negotiate the narrow streets of London town. In 1838, the first driver license was issued. Um, you had to be a member of the Corporation of Coachmen, which had originally started in 1693. In 1847, the Town Police Clauses Act came into force, where rules and regulations were made up for these drivers that were members of the Corporation of Coachmen. The first motorised hackney carriage or taxi was introduced on the streets of London in 1928. And since then, all hire and reward was done with horse drawn carriages. So, we mentioned in Unit 1 that we'll be covering uh, different Acts of Parliament. There are various Acts of Parliament and local government rules closely regulate the taxi and private hire industry. Some of these regulations date back over hundreds of years. Uh, some are very recent and reflect the importance of the government attaches to equality and public health concerns. These are updated regularly. They include the Town Police Clauses Act, which is introduced for the Hackney drivers, the Local Government Miscellaneous Provisions Act, which was brought in to regulate the private hire industry and amend some of the Hackney regulations as well. There's the Transport Act 1985, the Road Safety Act 2006, the Motor Vehicle Seatbelt Regs, uh, which were updated in 2006, the Rehabilitation of Offenders Act 1974, Equality Act, which we've covered in Unit 3 2010, and obviously local licensing conditions. New drivers. There are many difficulties and challenges that face a new driver when he is considering, he or she is considering to apply for a, a license in the taxi or private hire industry. It may be many years since you've passed your actual driving test, and in that time you've accumulated a number of bad habits. The average mileage in the UK is between 10 and 12,000 pounds. 
you, there'll may be a sudden average increase in your mileage of anything between 40 to 70,000 70, miles per year. You are driving in all weather, all different traffic conditions. There is pressure on you regarding timekeeping and timetables. You may be working long shifts and on sociable hours, which you're not used to doing. Obviously, your vehicle insurance cost is going to massively increase. And you may have never dealt face to face with the public. You may have worked in a kitchen or a warehouse, such like an or office. Um, dealing with the public, you will meet people from all walks of life, from different social standings. You have to be able to adapt your conversation to meet the customer's needs. Carrying passengers for high and reward is a very responsible job. You know you have a duty of care. It requires a range of skills and knowledge, including driving skills, customer service skills, communication skills, knowledge of local routes, even though you may have a satellite navigation system. You must be able to accurately process your fares and any charges. You must have full knowledge of the local license conditions and the statutory regulations governing the industry. As regards some of these items, driving skills, communication skills, knowledge of routes, knowledge of local license conditions, you may very well be tested on your application for your license with your local authority. There are three types of license relating to the trade. There is the driver's license, which is obviously what you need to drive the vehicle. There's the vehicle license, should you own the vehicle, the vehicle needs to be licensed and tested to make sure it's safe to use for hire and reward. And should you wish to take bookings on your own behalf, if you have a private hire license, you will need a private hire operator's license. Should you have a full Hackney license, you don't need the private hire operator's license, you can take bookings uh, of your own account. As regards your driving license, your DVLA license, your B1 license, uh, there will be a check carried out with Swansea to make sure you've not got more than a certain number of points on your license or you've not been banned from driving at any time regarding no insurance or drink driving or driving under the influence of drugs. You can hold all three licenses. Obviously, driving the vehicle. If you actually own the vehicle as well, you will need the vehicle license. And should you wish to take bookings, as I've said, on your own account by phone, a booking office or over the internet, you will need to have a private hire operator's license. This is when you hold a private hire license. There are substantial fines for drivers who undertake a hire without appropriate license. Apart from the fact that you would have no insurance, so you accumulate six penalty points on your driving license and a fine of up to two and a half thousand pounds. You're breaking your licensing conditions. Driving a private hire vehicle without a private hire license in place, level three, a maximum fine of a thousand pounds. And driving a hackney carriage or a taxi without a hackney carriage license, once again, level three, maximum fine of a thousand pounds. The reasons why these fines are substantial and penalties are substantial is because you have no insurance. If you own the vehicle and allow an unlicensed driver to drive that vehicle, besides the driver being at fault, the owner of the vehicle is also at fault and will be fined at level three, a thousand pounds maximum. So the owner of the vehicle should check licenses of anybody wanting to hire or use that vehicle. Obviously, he has to have the correct insurance in place as well. We mentioned the Town Police Clause Act 1847 and the Local Government Miscellaneous Provisions Act 1976. These booklets are available from Her Majesty's Stationery Office should you wish to read the full uh, regulations contained therein. I'll give you an extract from each of these um, booklets and regulations. First of all, the Town Police Clause Act 1847. Section 46. 
No person shall act as a driver of any hackney carriage licensed in pursuance of this or the special act to apply for hire within the prescribed distance without first obtaining a license from the commissioners, which license shall be registered by the clerk to the commissioners and such fee as the commissioners may determine shall be paid for the same. Every such license shall be in force until the same is revoked, except during the time that the same may be suspended as after mentioned. That sounds quite complicated. Basically, what it means is that you should not drive, not act without first obtaining a license. Going on to the private hire, section 51. No person shall in a controlled district act as a driver of any private hire vehicle without having a current license under section 51. Straightforward. It's telling you you need a private hire license to drive a private hire vehicle. Also, some provisions and conditions have, have been attached to that. Subject to the provisions of this part of the Act, a district council shall, on the receipt of an application from any person for the grant to that person of a license to drive private hire vehicles, grant to that person a driver's license, provided that the district council or local authority shall not grant a license A, unless they are satisfied that the applicant is fit and proper to hold a license, i.e. if passed the medical with their GP and they've, they're subject to a DBS check that comes back with no criminal record. B, to any person who has not for at least 12 months been authorized to drive a motor car or is not at the date of application for a driver's license so other authorized. In other words, one, you have to hold a UK or EU driving license for a minimum of 12 months. That's an absolute minimum. And also that you're authorized to drive that car, you've not been banned. Requirements to obtain that license. So I've just mentioned in the previous bit, this applies obviously to Hackney and private hire. You must hold a DVLA or EU driving license for a minimum of 12 months. Whether that changes after the Brexit finalization is a question yet to be answered. You shall be deemed to be fit and proper, subject to a, a standard or usually nowadays an enhanced disclosure barring service check and also uh, that medical with your own GP. The driver will make, the council will maintain a register of all drivers and their particulars. Your particulars will be your name, address, contact number, and email address if you have one. Should any of these details change, you have a duty to inform your local authority licensing department. A council can attach any preconditions to the granting of the license they feel is correct at the time in their borough. These preconditions may include, the applicants for driving license must be above a certain age. Now you know that you can have a UK driving license for a minimum of 12 months. So in theory, if you pass your test at 17, you could be driving a private hire or hackney at 18. However, the majority of licensing authorities usually have a minimum age of 21. Some even have a minimum age of 25. Applicants must have held a full UK or EU driver license for a specified period. So the law states a minimum of 12 months. Local authorities can put any time on that they like, two years, three years, five years. You may be subject to an English assessment and a mathematical test. You may be subject to a driving test. This is not mandatory. It's up to the local authority if they want to introduce one. You may be subject to a topographical knowledge test, a knowledge of routes of your local area. All councils tend to test you on their local licensing conditions. So you're aware of the local regulations. Why are there local regula regulations? To reflect the needs in that area. For instance, a village in Cornwall would be totally different than city centre Manchester. So you need a medical certificate signed by your GP. You may need a submission of two passport photographs or they may simply just take your photograph 
at the application process within the licensing office. You must have no more than a specified number of points on your DVLA driving license. This is usually a minimum of six points. You are subject to a disclosure bar in service check and also a DVLA license check. Some local authorities will take into account your current or previous employment. Under the requirements for drivers to have a DBS check, I'm just going to abbreviate this closure barring service to DBS check. Criminal offences recorded against the applicant are never spent under the terms of the Rehabilitation of Offenders Act. In other words, if you've ever been fined or convicted, that is always on your re record, is never spent. So on your application form, you must tell the absolute truth and recall any events that may have happened in your past life where you've been fined or actually jailed. This also would apply to any motoring offences that you can recall for your driving license. Applications for licenses require therefore full disclosure of all previous convictions and offences. You must also disclose any medical problems that could affect your ability to safely transport your passengers. Making any false statements or actually withholding information in order to obtain your hackney carriage, your taxi or your private hired driver's license is an offence. Once again, level three, maximum fine a thousand pound. So as you're aware, the applicant must produce a medical certificate signed by a registered medical practitioner, which is normally your own GP, unless the local authority tell you otherwise. This is to the effect that the, the applicant, you, the driver, is physically fit to drive a private hire or taxi. We mentioned it in unit two, medical fitness conditions may or will apply. These are usually five yearly medical examinations um, after the age of 45 up to the age of 65. Upon reaching 65, this would become a yearly medical examination. It would include uh, an eyesight test and blood pressure. The eyesight test may not be conduct conducted by your GP, as not all of them carry this out. You may have to go to an optician's and pay a separate fee. In some circumstances, a medical exemption certificate may be provided by the doctor, accepted by the licensing authority, where they issue the certificate which you can put in your vehicle. We've mentioned it already. Um, these uh, exemptions could include allergies to animals, so you're exempt from picking up guide dogs or inability to push a wheelchair up a ramp. This would apply if you've got an accessible vehicle where you're perfectly fit to drive the vehicle, but you're not actually physically able to push a disabled person in a wheelchair up that ramp. Your DVLA license category is B1. You may actually fall into a group two medical condition category. Um, diabetes and epilepsy are the most two common, uh, where the DVLA will issue you with what we call a C, category C1 license. Should you have a category C1 license, um, please check with your local authority will, whether they will actually accept your application as not all councils accept diabetic drivers in particular. That is type one diabetes. Uh, there are, I mentioned diabetes and epilepsy are the most too common. There are other group two categories. It could be age limits, cardiovascular, if you've had heart problems, neurological disorders in general, uh, respiratory problems and sleep disorders such, such as sleep apnea. Um, obviously you need to get a good night's sleep. Any renal disorders, um, Obviously, if you sat in your car a long time, you need to be close to a toilet should you have renal disorders. Psychiatric disorders, particularly something like schizophrenia, where you could be fine the one minute and uh, unstable the next. Any major visual disorders. Um, should you ever have been registered as a drug addict or an alcoholic, so you've been dependent at some stage in your life on drugs or alcohol. Uh, impairment of cognitive functions, particularly um, applicable to older drivers. You may have some sort of disability where you need an assessment 
and any other miscellaneous conditions. Some cities and towns have, uh, introduce a local knowledge test, i.e. location of streets, addresses, local landmarks, routes to be taken, etc. You may have to do this topographical test as part of the requirement uh, to get your license. The driver's license. The driver's license, when it's issued, shall remain in force for a maximum of three years. It can be a lesser period as determined by the council which is usually a year. Some councils, you have to renew your license every single year with other councils or local authorities. Uh, within your first year, it may be issued as a yearly one, and then provided you've had no black marks against you within that year, upon renewal, uh, will be issued for three years. The council obviously is entitled to recover any costs for the administration and issues of the license, and they will charge you a fee for doing so. Working within the regulations. Once a vehicle is licensed as a private hire vehicle, every driver of that vehicle, whether it be used for business or pleasure, must possess a current private hire driver license. So the license, what will appear on the license? Obviously the license and authority's name. Apart from that, everything is about the driver. The name of the person to who it's granted. The expiry date the badge number, the licensing authority, as I mentioned, and the type of license, whether that be private hire, hackney, or a lot of licensing authorities nowadays are issuing what we call a dual license. If you have a dual license, um, the category of driver you fall into is determined by the license plate on your vehicle. An offence is committed if an unlicensed driver, such as your wife or partner, is allowed to use that licensed vehicle for shopping purposes or other journeys. As I've said, every driver of the vehicle, whether it's used for business or pleasure, must, must possess a current private hire vehicle driver license. Successful applicants for driver and vehicle licenses will receive their conditions of license from the council. These would normally come in your application pack so you can learn them in preparation for the local authority test. These conditions are a combination of the statutory acts, for example, 1847 Act, and any local bylaws, the uh, Local Government Miscellaneous Provisions Act, operating within the district. Any laws made within, within the Local Government Miscellaneous Provision Act are known as bylaws. Each council will set its own bylaws, and these vary from one area to another, to reflect the needs of that area. They all must be complied with, otherwise, disciplinary action or even prosecution may take place. So the council issue a badge, you shall wear the badge in, in a manner plainly and di distinctly visible to all your passengers. So who is allowed to see your badge? The passenger. Who is allowed to see your license, which is the paperwork, authorized officers, i.e. police, DVSA and licensing. The driver who does not visibly display, display his badge is committing an offence under local licence conditions and will be subject to a fine, level three, maximum £1,000. All drivers must have hire and reward insurance, which we've covered already, um, usually comprehensive. You may also want, if you're a Hackney driver, personal indemnity insurance to increase your um, public liability limit. Uh, it's a, basically an umbrella policy which covers everything you need. Um, yeah, you can have this, uh, your policy on an annual or a monthly instalment plan, maximum 60% no claims bonus. Your domestic car insurance, you cannot transfer your no claims bonus to your private IR or Hackney policy. It's a separate policy and you start from scratch. So you pay the full insurance fee. If you have more than uh, two cars, but normally nowadays five cars, you could consider getting fleet insurance if you're renting cars out so that one driver can swap from one car to another. You may consider taking out personal acting insurance, particularly if you're self-employed, so that you've got income should you be off the road through an accident. A district council, a local authority, 
may suspend, revoke, or refuse to renew the license of any driver on any of the following grounds. That since the granting of that license, he or she has A, been convicted of any offence involving dishonesty, indecency, or violence. So they consider you not fit, fit to hold that license. If you've been convicted of an offence under or has failed to comply with any of the provisions in the 1847 Act for taxi drivers or the relevant part of the 1976 Act for taxi or private hire drivers and for any other reasonable cause. If they think you're not fit to carry passengers for hire and reward, they can suspend or revoke your license. Should you not agree with any decision made by your local authority, the driver can appeal to the magistrate's court against that decision to suspend or revoke the driver's license. That driver can continue to work until the appeal is heard in the magistrate's court. This form of suspension or revocation takes place after a period of 21 days beginning with the day of which the written notice under section 61 of the local government miscellaneous provisions act is given to the driver if you've not lodged an appeal in other words if you are going to appeal you've got to do so within 21 days otherwise you are suspended however the case of appeal will not be heard if it appears that in the interest of public safety the authorities, i.e. the police, require the suspension or revocation of the license of an immediate effect. A written notice under Section 52 of the Road Safety Act 2006 will be given to the driver informing him of the reasons for the suspension. The driver must stop work and surrender his license immediately, at once. This is because usually the police are involved, because it's involved some sort of dishonesty, indecency or violence. In other words, the driver is not safe to carry the public for hire and reward. He has been suspended in the interests of public safety. Outcome two. Know the rules and regulations pertaining to the license application and operation of a licensed taxi or private hire vehicle. This is all about the vehicle you are going to be using. So you need to provide a suitable vehicle and we're going to talk about suspension, revocation, and appeals of the vehicle license. One thing you must think about, if the offence is against the driver, it's the driver's license that is suspended or revoked. If the fault is with the vehicle, it's the vehicle license that is suspended or revoked. In other words, a PG9I is issued or it's failed its, its um, statutory plate test. Providing a suitable vehicle. We're going to talk about taxis, first of all, hackney carriages. A hackney carriage has certain privileges. It must be able to apply for hire on any street within the district of the licensing authority. In other words, it can drive around its own district with an illuminated sign saying for hire or taxi. And the, the general public can hail that taxi and he has to stop. He can only do this within his own district of the licensing authority. He can also apply for hire from a designated taxi rank or appointed stand within his local licensing authority where the public can approach him for hire. As I've said, they have to display an illuminated sign offering his services for hire or taxi. Private hire, providing a suitable vehicle. There's a range of vehicles obviously available for private hire. It's very extensive and usually chosen by the operator should you want, he want you to have a certain car or chosen by yourself that you find commercially viable or suitable for the type of work you want to do. You could have simply a saloon car, a hatchback, an estate car, very useful for airport work in particular, multi-purpose vehicles, uh, minibuses, up to a maximum of eight seats, um, medium-sized buses and even limousines stretch limousines maximum eight passengers for private hire so providing a private hire vehicle looking at your local vehicle conditions it must be suitable in size type and design 
It must be covered by a policy of insurance which meets the requirements of part four of the 1988 Road Traffic Act. It must be suitable, mechanically conditioned and safe and comfortable. It's got to pass its statutory plate test. It's not of a design and appearance as to lead any person to believe the vehicle is a hackney carriage stroke taxi. In other words, put in simple terms, a black cab TX4 London cab, call it whichever you wish, can never ever bear private hire plates. It is always a taxi. Majority of private hire vehicles now often bear the operator's name and phone number. Usually as well, it will say, all jobs must be pre-booked through the operator. Private hire vehicles are not allowed signs on the roof, which states the word taxi or for hire. Taxis and private hire vehicles can be licensed up to carry a maximum of eight passengers. Uh, local licensing conditions will give guidance on seating capacities and the, the way seats are in the vehicle, whether you're allowed rear facing seats, etc. Should you want to carry more than eight passengers, you need to uh, have a PCV license, passenger carrying vehicle license. People considering applying for a vehicle license should contact your licensing authority before purchasing a vehicle for taxi or private hire work. This avoids you buying a vehicle that does not meet your local licensing conditions. Always check that the type of vehicle you want to buy is suitable for your local licensing authority. Other conditions that could be included. Carrying capacity, usually a maximum of four to eight passengers. So a minimum of four, maximum of eight, that is definite. Uh, however, regard the minimum, some councils may change that. Uh, there's one or two councils now simply having um, smart cars, which is only obviously one passenger, uh, electric, small electric cars. This is for environmental reasons. There must always be unobstructed means of exit. So all aisles and doors kept clear. For, for taxis, black cabs, London cabs, they should have wheelchair access and some private hire vehicles can as well. Your vehicle must not be a convertible, a cabriolet, which is a bit ironic when you think about what we talked about earlier. And it must never ever be left-hand drive in, the, in England. So it's a right-hand drive vehicle so the passenger can disembark from the near side. It must have at least four doors. As I say, there's one or two councils now introduce smart cars where it's one passenger, so it's only the, uh, the, the, uh, the one door. All seats must be correctly positioned for safety and comfort. Some councils will not allow rear facing seats in private hire minibuses, for instance. And a private hire vehicle must never ever resemble a taxi. So you can't have roof signs saying taxi or for hire. Any conversions or alterations to the licensed vehicle undertaken prior to purchase or even after purchase may breach motor vehicle type approval regulations. And obviously it may breach your local licensing conditions. So any conversions and alterations must be done with the approval of the licensing authority. Once those modifications have been carried out after having received approval, all modifications will require the appropriate documentation prior to the council inspection for your test, i.e. or e.g. a certificate of compliance. Approval of the vehicle. Two forms of legally acceptable approval given to vehicles for taxis or private hire. A, type approval is a way of making sure that vehicles given uh, meet a given set of standards without testing every single vehicle. So for instance, if you wanted to buy uh, Toyota Aventis that you've already seen in your local authority, you know you can buy that vehicle without getting local authority approval because the precedent has been set and they're already being used within your local authority. Single vehicle approval is a way of making sure that specialist vehicles meet a given set of standards by, by testing every vehicle and by approving every vehicle. So for instance, stretch, stretch limos, they will need to get approval before testing and test every single vehicle. 
to make sure it's suitable for you to even apply for its license. The agency involved in the issue approvals is the DVSA, Driver and Vehicle Standards Agency. Also the VCA, the Vehicle Certificate Agency, they can be involved too. Type approval. There are three categories of vehicle that licensing will normally consider for licensing. One, category one. European Community Whole Vehicle Type Approval. All of the vehicles you see there are category one. You know you can buy them and use them within your local authority without seeking approval from the authority in the first place. So saloon cars of a certain size, estate cars, London cabs and Peugeot E7s. Category two is the National Small Series Type Approval. This is a UK national scheme, not EU, aimed at low volume manufacturers who intend to sell only in the UK. Once a vehicle tap has been approved, more vehicles of the same type can be sold across the UK without further inspection. Presently, there is no such vehicle available in the UK. Um, but I really do feel there's a market for such a vehicle. It would be advisable for the buyer of a second-hand vehicle in particular to contact the converter and requ request any copies of the low volume type approval certificate. So it may be you've had a, ve a vehicle has at some stage been converted into say a wheelchair accessible vehicle. You need to see that it's got approval to have been done correctly. Category three, UK individual vehicle approval. Individual vehicle approval inspections encompass vehicles which have been imported or converted or modified, which may fall into category one or even category two. But these vehicles, uh, which include stretched limos, converted vans into um, six or eight seaters, vehicles that have been adapted for wheelchair use, uh, these have to be approved for taxi and private hire use. They will have to be specially examined and tested for safe operation, such as the wells, the floor strength, the tires, the anchorage of the seat belts, the glass tintage, etc., etc. The VCA, Vehicle Certificate Agency, is involved in these approvals with the DVSA. A licensing authority may request evidence of compliance against type approval standards particularly where vehicles have been modified since the original registration. To facilitate this, a non-statutory voluntary IVA test is available, individual vehicle test is available. If the vehicle meets this standard, a letter of compliance is issued in place of the Minister's approval certificate. This is from the VCA. It's considered best practice for a local licensing authority to insist, for, insist that at least one of the above type approvals is produced prior to any imported vehicle being licensed as a hackney or private hire vehicle. You will usually find that once an imported vehicle has been approved, that type of vehicle will normally get category one. Should it not have this, it will need to go under category three and each individual vehicle will need to be inspected before the test to see if it is suitable to be a private hire or taxi. We've mentioned this in previous unit. Any authorised officer of the council shall have the power to inspect at all reasonable times the fitness of a hackney carriage or private hire vehicle or its taxi meter. But do remember, an authorised officer of the council hasn't got the power to stop a moving vehicle. He needs to have a police constable with him. I've just put some uh, quite alarming newspaper cuttings on the screen there. One was the headline, I've not given you the cutting, about in Burnley, where licensing officers were inspecting taxis at school runs when they were dropping off at the school. Um, then I've got one in Coventry, one in four black cabs, 25% tested by police during a series of operations was so dangerous they were taken off the road. Gateshead, a joint operation by Gateshead Council and Northumbria Police led to more than 20 unsafe taxis and private hire vehicles being taken off the road in December. 
20 out of 70. That is close on a third. Make sure your vehicle is safe to be used on the road. You have a duty of care to carry your passengers in safety and comfort. An authorised officer or DVA, DVSA inspector, so the authorised officer of the police, who makes an ad hoc inspection of a vehicle and finds a serious defect, has the authority to prohibit, prohibit any further movement of that vehicle. They can also take the plates off the vehicle. They will issue a PG9I, which we covered in Unit 4. Authorised persons or agencies include the police. They may examine licensed vehicles at any reasonable time day or night, 24 hours, under Section 68 of the Local Government Miscellaneous Provisions Act 1976. Obstructing an officer, whether it be DVSA, licensing or police, is an offence under the Local Government Act 1976. We mentioned regulation and restriction in one of the other units. Some councils Re limit the number of hackney carriages license they will issue this is for vehicles they will not restrict hackney carriage driver's licenses because drivers can share a vehicle you cannot make an application for a hackney carriage vehicle license without identifying first of all the vehicle you wish to license and also therefore it's insensible if you're in a regulated area where the number of licenses are restricted to inquire about the restrictions before receding, proceeding to buy a, buy a car, buy a taxi, a vehicle. Should you buy a vehicle where there's restrictions, it will be simply sat on your drive or your street at home, waiting until more licenses are released in a regulated area. Just as a reminder, no driver or proprietor of the vehicle should permit an unlicensed vehicle to apply for hire without first obtaining a license. The vehicle has to be, have a license and a, visible, and a visible plate on it so it can apply for hire on a hackney. When a hackney carriage license is, is granted, the council issue a plate and also a paper license for the vehicle. Uh, the plate has to be fixed, uh, how the license inform you. A vehicle standing at a rank or apply for hire within the boundary for which a license was obtained must openly display that license plate corresponding with the number issued by the council. It has to be clean so you can read the details on it. Private hire. Subject to the provisions outlined in parts A and B of section 48, the district shall not refuse a license for the purpose of limiting the number of private hire vehicles in respect of which such licenses are granted. In layman's terms, it means that no licensing authority in England can restrict the number of licenses issued for private hire vehicles. So in a regulated area, they can only restrict the number of licenses issued for hackney vehicles. When a private hire vehicle license is granted, the council will issue a plate or sometimes a disc to identify that a vehicle is a private hire. And it's in respect of that vehicle license which has been granted. The vehicle plate or disc must be exhibited on the vehicle at all times in such a manner as prescribed by the council. So should they issue two plates, front and rear, they have to be displayed as such. So should they simply issue a rear plate, displayed as such. Should, should they issue a front disc and a rear plate, the front disc will be in your window, the plate fixed as, dis, as prescribed by the council. The PCO will only issue discs front and rear. An aggrieved person may appeal to the magistrate's court if the vehicle is refused a license by the district council or local authority. No driver or proprietor shall permit an unlicensed vehicle to be used as a hackney carriage or private hire vehicle without first obtaining a license. And that license plate has to be exhibited and displayed. Failure to do so, level three, maximum fine of a thousand pounds. So 
the license plate itself. The licensing authority will issue a license plate or disc for the vehicle. Very often, both are front and rear plate, as I've mentioned. The details on the plate. The plate number, registration number of the vehicle, and what type of vehicle it is. Expiry date of that license. The number of passions, passengers licensed to be carried in the vehicle. The licensing authority who has issued the license plate. The color and description of the vehicle. In other words, everything on that plate is appertaining to the vehicle, not the driver. The plate must not be removed for illegal purposes. It must be securely fixed and it fixed and ex exhibited as prescribed by your local authority. It must be maintained in good condition and retain its visibility so you can read the details that are on it. Now, even though your vehicle may have passed its plate test with the DVSA, you cannot use the vehicle for hire until the plates have actually been issued by the local authority and then affixed to the vehicle. Local Government Act. We're still going to talk about plates and signs. The local council may attach to the grant of a vehicle license such conditions as they consider reasonably necessary, including conditions about design or appearance of the vehicle. So the council may attach to the grant of a vehicle license such considers conditions as they consider reasonably necessary, including conditions or prohibited display of signs on or from the vehicle to which the license rel relates. Some licensing authorities now are actually making it mandatory for you to carry the name of the private hire company for which you are working. As with your driver license, the council can also attach conditions of license to the vehicle. Such conditions are the age of the vehicle, where some licensing authorities, once your vehicle reaches a certain age, you have to change it. This is to keep up standards. Colour conditions. Some councils will insist that you can only have a certain colour of vehicle as a private hire or a taxi. Wheelchair accessibility. They may insist that all taxis have to have wheelchair access. Details of permitted advertising. Well, we've mentioned that private hire may be able to advertise their company name and telephone number, but taxis may be able to advertise and you may see on the London cabs full wraparound advertising. The local authority will tell you what is allowed and what is not. Maintenance of the vehicle and the frequency of vehicle inspections. Inspections, the plate is issued for a year. However, within that year, there may be one, two or three inspections. Notif notification of vehicle modifications. Should you be wanting to change anything on your vehicle, you have to apply to the council first to see that it's within licensing approval. Once it's been modified, it has to have a certificate of compliance. Seating restrictions, whether on private hire in particular, you're allowed to have rear facing seats. Provision of safety equipment, such as a first aid kit or fire extinguisher. They will tell you what is required. Types of permitted spare tyres. Are you allowed a space saver? Some councils allow it, some do not. Use of signs of notices, whether you can have the word taxi on a hackney or do you have to have the words for hire on a taxi? Notification, notification of ownership transfer. Well, obviously you need to send your logbook, your V5 off to Swansea to to let them know of any change of ownership, you also need to let your local authority licensing officer know about that. Notification of any accidents or accident damage. Accident damage within 72 hours of it happening. Suspension, revocation and appeals of the vehicle license. The council may suspend or revoke or refuse to renew either type of vehicle license, taxi or private hire, on any of the following grounds. A, that the vehicle is unfit for use as a taxi or private hire, i.e. it's failed, it's plate test, or it's been issued with a PG9i 
on a roadside spot check. Any offence or non-compliance of the relevant section of the 1847 Act for Taxis or the 1976 Act for Private Hire. And once again, for any other reasonable cause. It may be simply that you have a dirty car. The vehicle is suspended. Suspension revocation of bills. We shall continue on this. Where a district council has suspended, revoked, or refused to renew a vehicle license under this section, they will give the proprietor of the vehicle a notice within 14 days. This is a written notice within 14 days, given details of why the license has been suspended or revoked, or why they've refused to renew that license. Once again, you've got leave to appeal against the decision of the district council through the magistrate's court. You have to do this within 21 days of receiving the written notification. When a license has simply expired, you might be buying a new vehicle or retiring from the industry, or it's been revoked under section 60, or when a license has been, set, been suspended under section 68 and the written notice has been served, the plate has to be returned to the licensing authority within seven days. It is the property of the licensing authority. Failure to return the plate within that specified, specified time is an offence and could lead to a summary fine. An authorised person can remove the plate if the notice has not been complied with. So an authorised officer from the council can come and remove that plate. We've completed details regarding the application process for the driver and also for the vehicle. We're now going to talk about uh, regulatory framework. Outcome three know how to work within the regulatory framework for carrying passengers for hire and reward. Applying for hire and displaying fares, fare meters, bylaws and other statutory requirements. Applying for hire and displaying fares. Applying for hire is a term legally applicable only to hackney carriages, taxis. It can never ever apply to a private hire vehicle or driver. So only taxis can apply for hire, be hailed within their own borough or be approached when they're on a rank within their own borough. Any person or proprietor applying for hire without a hackney carriage taxi license shall be committing an offence. So private hire can't apply for hire. Should they do so, Apart from the fact they have no insurance, which could carry six penalty points on your driving license and a fine up to two and a half thousand pounds, your private hire license will be revoked. So you have lost your occupation and therefore income. Hackney carriage can be used for private hire work. While private hire vehicles cannot apply for hire, hackney carriages can do prior private hire work but only under certain circumstances. All Hackney fares are set by the local authority, so they become a bylaw. A Hackney carriage or a, a taxi driver can charge a fare no greater than that fixed under the bylaw. And the fare must be calculated from the point at which the hire commences the journey. In other words, the taxi meter cannot be turned on before the journey is started. Contravention of that is an offence. The driver of a hackney carriage, a taxi, who accepts a fare ending outside the district must have an agreement with the hire as to the cost of the hire when the period begins. So if you're going out of area, you arrange a set fare with the passenger, which obviously the passenger has to agree with before you start the journey. If you're staying within the borough, you use the taxi meter as the preferred option. So in Borough, use the meter. Outside of Borough, negotiate a fare with the hirer that is agreeable to both you and the passenger. And this ag agreement allows you as the driver to turn the meter off. Should you not be able to negotiate a fare for whatever reason before the start of the journey, the fare meter 
only should be charged. Should you be making a journey going out of area, record that fare in your diary. Pick up time, date, time, pick up, destination, how much the passenger paid. Overcharging is a very serious offence. Should you charge more than what you agreed with the passenger initially, in other words, at the end of the journey, you increase the fare, that is uh, level one, a fine of no more than £250, and probable return of the whole fare. Charging more than the legal fare, in other words, what is stated in the bylaw set by the local authority, that is more serious, level three, maximum of £1,000. Overcharging is a very serious offence. The council fixes the rate for hackney carriages, known as tariff tables. Uh, from time to time, they may change the rates and other charges in connection with the hire of a hackney carriage, and they have to publish them as a table of fares. That table of fare is issued to every uh, taxi driver and has to be displayed, exhibited inside the carriage in a position that is clearly visible to all passengers. Why does it have to be clearly visible to all passengers? Because give it, it gives a breakdown of all the charges. Other things that could be included, call out charges, cost cancellation charges, soilage charges, that's clearly displayed on the tariff table. Should the customer not pay it, they are committing an offence. Carriage of luggage or extra luggage or extra passengers, again, been listed on the tariff table, as will perambulators, baby buggies. Carriage of animals, except assistance dogs, you cannot charge for assistance dog. Should you incur any extra charges that are not on the tariff, such as road tolls, congestion charges in London, um, car parking or drop-off charges, these can be added to the displayed fare charge or the agreed set charge. But please remember, there is definitely no charge for assistance dogs and no charge for wheelchair, extra charges for wheelchair passengers. Should a passenger ask for a receipt for the fare they pay for the journey, you must give them a written receipt or one produced by your printer, which is attached to your taxi meter, should you have that facility. It's a legal requirement that if a passenger asks ask for a receipt, you have to provide one. The taxi meter is installed in your hackney carriage or private hire vehicle. It has to be tested and approved uh, by the council. On private hire nowadays, obviously a lot of it is incorporated into your PDA or your data head. If it's a standalone ta uh, taxi meter, it's an offence to tamper with any seal, alter the taxi meter with intent to mislead. So it's fraud or permit the vehicle to be used in, in contravention of this act. There's nothing in the Local Government Act that says a taxi meter needs to be fitted to a private hire vehicle, but they have to be installed in taxis or hire carriage. Statutory bylaws. Local Government Act. These are concerned with the regulation of hackney carriage drivers. So, things that are included in the bylaws, you cannot demand a fare greater than that agreed or authorised under the bylaw. You have to stick to the tariff. Location of rank within the local authority, their position, and the maximum number of taxis on each rank. Should you approach a rank that is full, the official line is you have to drive around until you find an empty space on another rank. Obviously, this is not environmentally friendly and it is usually not enforced by police officers or the local authority, but that's the official line. You will be given a map of your local authority showing you the prescribed limits of your city, town or borough. Requirement of a driver to undertake a high within a prescribed distance. So there may be limits to how far you can drive or pick up. It could also include delay, neglecting or refusing to take a hire when called upon. If you're for hire, you are for hire. The only reason you can refuse a hire is by either medical exemption certificate for an assistance dog, 
medical exemption certificate for a wheelchair bound passenger or for safety reasons. Safety includes any dangers to yourself, the passenger or the vehicle. Delaying, neglecting or failing to announce yourself when arriving for hire. You should make every attempt to find your passenger. With private hire, it's quite easy nowadays because you've got the text back facility where the customer knows that you've arrived. Distance the driver is compiled to drive with any one hirer. So, there may be a limit as to how far you can go because of safety reasons. You must journey by with the hirer by the most direct route unless instructed otherwise. You cannot go what we call the circuitous route, not unless the customer asks you to take a specific route, in which case you follow customer's instructions. There is no offense if you're following customer's instructions. You cannot tout for business. This is for both private hire or taxis. You can't shout, I'm going to the city center, anyone. I'm going to Tesco's, I'm empty, do you want to jump in? Any of these things. All these bylaws concern the conduct of the driver. A driver trying to attract business by encouraging persons to enter his vehicle is guilty of touting. So also any misconduct on the rank is covered by bylaws. What would you do if there's misconduct on the rank between taxi drivers? You would report it to your local authority. Private hire. Can't be hired unless booked through the operated, operator. You can give a customer a business card and also you've usually got your phone number on your door. People will have smartphones, mobile phones. They're able to phone your company quickly so that pickup can be arranged. It may be you're looking at your PDA or data head and see that you're position number 10 on the plot. Just to show the passenger that there's plenty of drivers around and one will be around in a moment. If you're number one on the plot, do not allow the passenger to get in your vehicle until the job comes through to your screen. You could be accused of touting otherwise. We've mentioned this in unit two, a passenger who hires a vehicle with the intention of not paying the fare is known as a bilker or a runner. They've run off without paying. Please contact the police. This is recommended as a pattern may emerge. Once they've done it once, they may do it again, usually for a higher fare, but also contacting the police could help them with their inquiries to stop these particular people doing it in future. It is a criminal offense under the Theft Act 1968. Documents. This is paper documents. Authorised officers. On request, authorised officers could ask for the following documents. So, authorised officers, police, licensing, and TVSA officials. Your Hackney Carriage Vehicle Licence, paperwork. Private Hire Vehicle Licence, paperwork. Hackney Carriage Driver's Licence, the paperwork. Private hire driver's license, the paperwork, your insurance certificate, your certificate of compliance for any modifications, or your pass certificate for your vehicle. Failure to produce any of these paper paperwork licenses within five working days could lead up to a fine of level three, a thousand pounds. We mentioned in unit four. Any accident causing material damage which affects the safety, performance and appearance of the licensed vehicle or the comfort uh, or convenience of the passengers, the driver shall report the accident to the licensing authority as soon as reasonably practical, but it could be the weekend, so the maximum in any case is within 72 hours, three days. No person shall cause or permit any vehicle other than a hackney carriage to wait on an appointed stand. So there's no domestic cars, private cars. There's no private hire vehicles. There's no hackney carriage vehicles from another borough on that stand or rank. There will be signage saying that it is a taxi rank. If any person contra contra contravenes the provisions of this act, then he or she is guilty of an offence. As I've mentioned already, you cannot go by the circuitous route. 
So a driver who deliberately prolongs the journey in order to increase the fare is guilty of an offence. Penalty level three, up to a thousand pound, and usually a return of the full fare. Under the Local Government Act, 1976, and the 1847 Act, the Town Police Clauses Act, uh, a person is committing an offence if he or she willfully obstructs an officer or constable in pursuance of the 1976 Act or the 1847 Act. If they have stopped you to inspect your vehicle and you obstruct them from inspection, etc., you are breaking the law, the Local Government Act or the Town Police Clause Act. Penalty level three, a thousand pound. If you fail to comply with any reasonable request or requirement from an authorised officer or constable. If you fail to give an authorised officer or constable assistance or information, he or she may reasonably require to carry out their duties. As part of the 1976 Act for Private Hire and the 1847 Act for Hire or Taxi Drivers. Certain vehicles, whilst in theory are privately hire, are not subject to private hire licenses and neither are the drivers. So for instance, wedding vehicles and funeral vehicles, if they are solely, and that's the key word, solely or only used for weddings or funerals and not for any other private hire work, the vehicle does not need to be licensed and the driver of that vehicle does not need to carry a private hire license either. Penalties for refusing to drive. I've already mentioned the only refusals can be medical exemption certificate for an assistance dog, medical exemption certificate in accessible vehicle for a wheelchair passenger, and for safety grounds either to the driver, the passenger, or the vehicle itself. If you're hired, available for hire on a rank or displaying an illuminated sign within your body as a taxi and refuse to take the fare level two 500 pounds refusal has to be justified on the hackney again you cannot charge for extras that are not on the tariff so for instance on my caption there 10 pound for a guide dog well, A, there's no charge for a guide dog or assistance dog, so that driver is actually breaking the law, Equality Act, and also the Local Government Act. Shopping bag, £5. If there is a tariff for shopping bags, it's usually 10p or 20p, or sometimes nothing at all. Wheelchair, obviously, once again, can't carry, charge for a wheelchair. Charging more than the agreed fare, level one, £250. Charging more than the tariff fare, level three, £1,000. Whilst a taxi or even a private hire driver, for instance, may pick up passengers that are being dropped off at different destinations, he cannot demand separate fares. Normally what would happen is the passengers themselves, usually friends or family, would agree amongst themselves to pay separate fares at each stop. But if they want, as a taxi driver, a fare going out of Borough, a set fare to the last destination, they will tell you via which areas the other passengers want dropping. You have to give one set fare, not three or four different fares. Again, with the meter, you cannot stop and start the meter as each passenger disembarks. You start the meter at the commencement of the journey and you end the meter when the last passenger is getting out, when the full fare will be paid. The passenger may have collected some of the fare off the other passengers or some of the passengers even may have paid you along the way. You have not asked for staged fares. They have simply looked at the meter and seen how much the fare is to that particular spot where they've been dropped off. Obviously, penalties on drivers misbehaving. Drivers who are intoxicated whilst driving or driving under influence of drugs or dri driving or other actions cause injuries or death is obviously liable to criminal charges. This would include obviously loss of your license and therefore your livelihood 
and your future application of any license once um, you're either out of jail or you're available to apply for a license again. So as I've said, drunkenness or driving on influence of drugs, willful misconduct, endangering a person's life or limb, improperly standing in carriage, refusing to give way, or obstructing drivers or depriving him of a fare. A couple of things here. A lot of taxi ranks are on a crescent. So to approach the rear of the rank, you have to drive past the front of the rank. Courtesy and patience are required at all taxi ranks. So drivers, this is courtesy, drivers approaching a rank, exercise caution in picking up a, a fare within a reasonable distance. If you're in full view of the other drivers on the rank, turn your illuminated sign off and go to the rear of the rank. If you deliberately obstruct a driver on the rank, this would be subject to a level one, 250 pound. It is unreasonable behavior to obstruct another driver on the rank. Advertising. Hackney drivers, Hackney vehicles can advertise whereas private hire vehicles can only advertise the name of their company and phone number. They cannot allow general advertising on private hire. For all advertising on taxis, Hackney carriages must be of a professional standard. You can't just stick a piece of paper on the door saying Jim's Chippy, for instance. So, the licensing conditions and also the British Advertising Standards Authority will determine the parameters of any advertising that is allowed on the taxi, the Hackney carriage vehicle. So, advertising on taxis. There must, must be no advertising of anything ethnic, religious, sexual, political, or controversial. In other words, anything that may upset members of the public. You cannot advertise for escort agencies or massage parlors, as these may be masquerading as brothels. You cannot advertise gaming establishments because of gambling. You cannot advertise nude or semi-nude figures, as these could offend public taste. You can no longer advertise tobacco products or cigarettes. You can't advertise claims of effectiveness. And as I've mentioned, no advertising is allowed on private hire vehicles apart from the company name and telephone number if allowed by the local or licensing authority. No smoking. Smoke field vehicle operators and penalty notice regulation 2007 says that there is no smoking in your private hire or taxi allowed, whether you're on or off duty for yourself or passengers not allowed. It's the driver's responsibility to instruct the passenger not to smoke in his vehicle. So, the responsibility, the onus of ensuring that there's no smoking in a no smoking vehicle falls upon the driver, not the owner of the vehicle, the driver. The person managing responsible of the responsibilities of the vehicle. So if someone's hiring the vehicle out, they should be fitting no smoking signs, but the driver is still responsible. Should these regulations be contravened, individuals could face on the spot fines of minimum of 50 pounds. These could rise to as much as a thousand pounds should it be brought to court. And should that fine not be paid within time, it can increase to a maximum of two and a half thousand pounds. It is against the law to smoke in the vehicle. No smoking signs must be displayed on all entry and exit doors. So on a saloon car, you would have three signs. On the front door, windows and on the rear two door windows. Depending on your licensing authority, they may say that the sign has to be legible from the outside or from the inside, or preferably from both sides, a double-sided sign. Lastly, outcome four, know the duties and responsibilities of the operator. Requirements for the operator license, private hire bookings, and any other requirements. As a private hire driver to take bookings, as you may be just a, a one man band, a sole trader, you will need a private hire operator's license. As a private hire driver on a fleet, you may want to know how your licensed operator works and what requirements he needs to stick to. Suspension, revocation and appeals 
of the private hire operator's license. So, a license is required to operate licensed vehicles from a designated site. In other words, you need planning permission to open a dispatch office within an area or at a certain spot. No person shall in a controlled district operate any vehicle as a private hire vehicle without having a current license. So any vehicles on the fleet of the private hire base needs to have a private hire license. No operator license under section 55 of this act shall in a controlled district operate any private hire vehicle. So the vehicle has to have a license, the driver has to have a license. It is the operator's responsibility to check vehicle licenses and to check private hire driver licenses. It may be a condition of license that on the private hire driver's license, for instance, that the operator keeps the original. If this is the case, the driver should take a copy so he has a copy at home. As with the driver, the operator is subject to a DBS check. So the district council, the local authority will not grant an operator license unless they are satisfied that the applicant is fit and proper. So they will have an enhanced DBS check to make sure they've got no criminal background. They do not want criminals running private hire offices. They will attach other conditions as may be requested by the council. Why are private hire operators licensed? It's for the protection of their employees, the staff. Why are private hire drivers licensed? For the protection of the public. Why are private hire vehicles licensed? For the protection of the public. Private hire operators are licensed for the protection of their employees. Any applicant for the private hire operator's license aggrieved by the refusal of the council to grant such a license may appeal to the magistrate court within 21 days. The licensed operator or any member of his staff is obliged to give the customer a mess, an estimate of fare or even agree a set fare. Now, I say any member of his staff, the operator himself or herself is responsible for his staff's actions. So if they set a fare, that is legally binding. He needs to train his staff. Every contract for the hire of a private hire vehicle licensed under the Act is deemed to be made with the operator himself. Whether he or she himself provided the vehicle or took the booking. In other words, it's responsible for his staff that are answering the telephones and driving the vehicles. Every operator shall keep a record of all bookings before the commencement of, of the journey. Obviously, nowadays, usually by computer or in the very rare occasions, if you're not a computerized company, then a suitable book with numbered pages set out. These will include date and time of the fare, who took the call well, on a computer that's logged automatic, the pickup point, the set down point, so the pickup and the destination, the higher start time when you're actually picked up, any other remarks, whether there's an assistance dog or wheelchair, hirer's name and address, so the person who's booked it and their phone number, the quoted hire charge if there was a set fare, the plate number of the vehicle taking the job, the vehicle call sign, which we, is, is different than the driver's um, private hire driver license number and the vehicle license number, registration of the number, the driver's name and badge number. So all these are automatically recorded on the computer. Uh, and that's just an example of a book page. These records are available for inspection for licensed officers, which is licensing, office officer and the police. Failure to keep records of all bookings for private hire vehicles and private hire jobs is an offence under the Local Government Miscellaneous Provisions Act and its penalty level three of thousand pound to the operator. So as with the driver and the vehicle license, the council will issue conditions of license for the operators themselves. I'm going to give you now examples of the main headings from council conditions of license for operators. They must maintain all records of private hire transactions, job records. They must preserve those records for inspections by authorized officers, the police and licensing. 
within the office itself they must keep a full fair table in view for the staff and also if they have a waiting room they must keep a fair table uh, in an unobstructed view for any prospective clients waiting for their vehicle to arrive so the client the customer can see a breakdown of all the charges the operator's license when it's issued once again should be displayed in the office so the staff can see the operator's details uh, his name and his operator's license number and also once again if you have a waiting room in unobstructed view of prospective clients and customers so they can actually see who who operates the company if they have a waiting room they have to have uh, a seating area and that seating area has to be kept clean tidy and comfortable usually warm as well nowadays obviously they need to hold public liability insurance because the public are coming onto the premises um, in a waiting room and self-employed drivers are coming onto the premises on a regular basis they will also need employers liability should they be employing people to answer the telephones and dispatch work preservation of records this is just an example of records that have to be kept for inspection so driver and vehicle records any driver that has been on the system and any vehicle that has been on the system a record of that driver should they leave has to be kept for a minimum of 12 months. Any vehicle that has been on the system, uh, should that vehicle uh, be changed or should the driver and the vehicle leave the company once again, a record of the vehicle has to be kept for 12 months. Any private hire bookings, any private hire jobs, as we've already mentioned, have to be kept for a minimum of 24 months, two years. A private hire operator will also have to keep records of any taped private hire bookings and it will also have to have physical paper records of any lost property and any complaints that have been made. So a complaints procedure on lost property records. The licensing authority maintain a public register of all private hire operators. So Whilst the licensing authority have a list of all the private hire and hackney drivers in their area and a list of all the private hire and hackney vehicles in area, that is the licensing authority's own private register. For private hire operators, it's a public register. So anybody can ask for details of any private hire operators within their area. The register will detail the operator's name and operating address, not private address. His operator's license number and the date of grant and its expiry. Now, the vehicle license is issued for a maximum of a year. Within that year, there can be three tests, one, two or three tests. The driver's license is issued for a maximum of three years. The operator's license is issued for a maximum of five years. It could be a year, but it's a maximum of five years. A district council can suspend, revoke, or on application actually refuse to renew an operator's license on the grounds of any offence or non-compliance within the terms of the 1976 Act, the Local Government Act, because that applies to private hire. Any conduct would render that person unfit to hold the operator's license. They found him guilty of some criminal offence or breaking the law or being violent or aggressive or rude. Any material change in the circumstances of the operator since the license was granted. The fleet has increased. He's opened a satellite base. He's become a limited company and introduced another director. It's a material change in the operation of the business and also any other reasonable cause. Whatever the local authority decide, they can decide upon. It is up to the operator to appeal. Once again, the operator aggrieved by the decision of the council may appeal to the magistrate court within 21 days of the receipt of the notice of suspension or revocation or refuse to renew. One massive difference. A private hire or hackney driver can be suspended immediately in the interest of public safety, section 52 of the Road Traffic Act, Road Safety Act, beg your pardon. A vehicle can be suspended immediately should it fail its plate test or be issued with a PG9I for a, 
for a roadside spot check. There is no power to suspend an operator's license immediately, as in the case with drivers and vehicles. That is because he has clients that are dependent on him that have already made bookings and drivers that are dependent on, on him or her for a living. They will be given time to put their house in order. Should they appeal against the decision, the operator can still take bookings while, until the appeal is heard. Thank you. That is quite a comprehensive unit. Please check you have a full understanding before moving on to the next unit.